Now check it out. Palantir, you either have the haters or the lovers. There's nothing in between. And as you know, I am an officer in the army of Palantir love. I'm probably a general in the army of Palantir love. But there are people who really don't like the company. I mean, George Soros sold out. BlackRock selling out. You can't say that BlackRock are scrubs. You know, they're good. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of bad opinions by smart people. But on the other hand, you have guys like Drew Miller, who's pretty much the best hedge fund manager of all time. He just slotted up $150 million worth of shares. And you have Citadel just buying up $285 million of shares. I mean, million dollars, actually 13 million shares in general. So, and by the way, Citadel, the hedge fund, not Citadel, the market maker, but it's a huge difference. Uh, anyway, so there's so much opinions. You got people who hate it, people who love it, but there's no one that's absolutely indifferent. But in this video, I don't want to talk about contracts, opinions, the future, my general feeling and all that nonsense. I want to share with you 11 numbers that nobody's talking about that are going to blow you away about Palantir. My name is Tom Nash, and I quit my corporate job as a senior financial analyst to break down companies for you. If there's one thing you need to know about me, I don't take bullshit from anybody. Good morning, allegedly squad. This is your friendly former senior financial analyst, Tom, currently a full-time YouTuber, here to bring you some insight about Palantir. But before we do, I have a request. Please do not click nothing. Don't smash nothing. Don't buy nothing. I'm not selling any courses or any softwares or none of that. Just give me your attention for the next five minutes. Maybe buy a t-shirt. <laughs> That's the only thing I sell, I swear. Uh, and, you know, just let me educate you about Palantir. But in this video, I'm going to use straight up facts. No opinions, no nothing. Just facts in your face. Let's get it done. First of all, Palantir is not really a single company. A lot of people treat Palantir as one company, but in fact, that's just the legal definition. You have to understand that Palantir is divided into two separate companies that has almost no relation and no actual shared characteristics. On the one hand, you have more the advisory side, which is Gotham, which is the side that serves the governments, the agencies, the Department of Defense, and all that good stuff. They've been around for 17 years, and they have an amazing relationship with the government. They're bringing a lot of money, but the nature of that work is way more advisory and less scalable. On the other hand, you have Foundry. Now, Foundry is a relatively new development. It's pretty much a derivative that came out of Gotham that's designed to serve the commercial industry, the airlines, the drilling companies, the energy companies, the healthcare companies. It's pretty much industry agnostic. Now, this is a brand new development that's got derived out of this massive tool that they have for governments. And it's not as powerful or as strong, but you don't need a tank to drive to McDonald's and get a Big Mac. You know what I mean? You need a car and a good car. And I think that's what it is. But I think what they're building here is nothing short of phenomenals and phenomenals. <laughs> Why do we have multiple phenomenals? I don't know. Let's keep it in. Why not? And in this video, I want to share with you 11 facts that are going to blow you away about this company. And I'm sure most of you did not know one or more of these. So let's get started. So the first item is revenues. Let's talk about that money. So first of all, Palantir revenues, for those of you who are not familiar, are doing way better than mainstream media is telling you. Palantir revenues are up 112% over the past two years. They went from making $160 million in the first quarter of 2020 to making $340 million in the first quarter of 2021. That's a 112% increase, and you should know that. Fact number two, the gross profit of Palantir went up by 142% during the same two-year period from $110 million to $267 million. <laughs> The next point is cash flow. Let's talk about cash again. So unlike the nonsense you hear in mainstream media by some of these buffoons and also on YouTube by some of these bear case experts, Palantir is cash flow positive. Over the past three quarters, the cash flow of the company was in total $820 million, meaning they're generating more than $250 million in cash flow every single quarter for the past three quarters. So when you hear people talking about it, it's either because they don't understand accounting, because they're idiots before they're buffoons, or maybe it's because they're intentionally trying to disinform you. Whichever is true, I don't care. The next item is a fertile ground for all these writers, you know, writing their nonsense in mainstream media about how Palantir is spending money, burning money. Now, check this out. Certain expenses in a company are good. 
One of such expenses, if you're talking about a tech innovative company, is R&D, research and development. If you have high R&D expenses, usually in a company like Palantir, that means you're trying to get first to market with the best product. You're trying to develop something that's going to generate you cash flow in the future. Now, R&D expenses wise, Palantir has been splurging. They spent almost $1 billion in R&D in the past two years alone, which is pretty much par for the course when you're building a software trying to predict rational and irrational behaviors in a completely asymmetric environment. Asymmetric with double S. Yes, I said it. Or in other words, a software that literally predicts the future. So spending $1 billion in two years makes a lot of sense, proves the point that they're building something extremely innovative. And speaking of R&D expenses, let me use the R&D expenses number to show you why Foundry is a brand new product. And if you remember in the opener, I told you Palantir is two different companies and the R&D expenses clearly indicate that. Now, if you look at the R&D expenses like a nerd, like I did, you see that they've been spending about 75 to $80 million on average per quarter on R&D. Now, all of a sudden, three quarters ago, they started increasing that spend. And when they say increasing, I mean, like my grandpa goes on a bender, 313 million in R&D expenses just three quarters ago. And ever since then, 100 million per quarter, meaning that in the past two years, 53% of R&D expenses came within just the last nine months, meaning that's when they launched Foundry for real. So the whole argument that Foundry is just now being rolled out makes sense if you just look at the R&D numbers. This whole commercial business, even though it's already booming, this is just the beginning. This is embryonic. Wait for it. You haven't seen nothing yet. Now let's talk about money again. Check this out. Palantir has about 400 million in debt. However, the company is sitting on two and a half billion of cash. They can easily repay that debt tomorrow. But why would they? The interest rates are so low, they might as well keep it on the books. But here's a company that literally needs no loans. They have about 400, but it's just there because it's cheap. It's cheap money. They have a lot of cash flow sitting around 2.5 billion and they're cash flow positive. So you can't see any future dilutions or raising funds. They don't need to. They're generating positive cash flow. They're sitting on billions of dollars. This company isn't going to be begging for money anymore. They're on the launch pad. And unlike some of these so-called experts, if you actually take a look at the financials, you'll see how good this company is. Look at their assets. They have three billion in assets without goodwill or none of this nonsense, actual asset that make dollars. Now they have 1.2 billion of liabilities. That ratio is legit. However, it gets better. Look at the current liabilities to assets. 600 to 3 billion, 600 million to 3 billion. That's 5x ratio. That is incredible. That shows that whoever's running the finances of the company knows what the hell he's doing. In the next section, I'm about to expose some idiots. A lot of these experts are claiming that Palantir is trading on a massive premium. Partially, it is true. Palantir is not cheap by any means. They're trading at a very high level and they're not, 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 not ever could be claimed that they're undervalued. <laughs> Definitely not. However, if you compare it to Microsoft, oh my God, you're an idiot. I mean, that's as simple as that because that means you don't understand how comparables work. You have to compare multiples to comparable companies. So Palantir is currently trading at what, 22, 23? Look at companies that actually make sense for comparison with Palantir. Snowflake. 55. <laughs> what the hell is this? Look at C3i. What is it in the 30s? 35? I mean, they're definitely not trading higher than the comparables, but it's not cheap. So I will stipulate that if you're buying Palantir today, you're actually paying a lot, a lot for the future, but it's definitely not more than what you're paying for Snowflake or C3AI or any of these competitors. When you're doing multiples, you have to be able to compare it so you don't end up comparing it to Microsoft. And here's another piece of information that you won't hear in mainstream media. Apparently, they just hired, just in the first quarter, 50 new salespeople. Now, that's a 3% increase to its entire workforce just to get some new salespeople to actually push out and build the Salesforce system for this new product called Foundry. It's brand new. It's already selling like hotcakes. Hold on. Again, you haven't seen nothing yet. And let's talk about the common misconception about the government business, that it's stagnating. It's definitely not stagnating. Look at the numbers. The business grew 76% Q1 of last year to Q1 this year. 200 million per quarter at this point. 
This is going all the way to a billion. Not to mention they just locked in a contract with the National Nuclear Safety Administration for $90 million over the next five years. Not to mention the $5.4 billion of backlog of contracts they already have. Even if they don't sell a single contract anymore, they have $5 billion in the pipeline. Imagine that. So here's a few words for the Palantir haters, the bears, and people who think they're smarter than the rest of us. Now, all of you suck. <laughs> as simple as that. The numbers don't lie. You have no idea what you're missing out on. And I'm happy. I'm happy to see you miss out. See you in a couple of years. Bye bye, motherfuckers. Later.